My name is Jasper Larsson and I'm a partner at Carney, the global management consulting firm. I'm based in Stockholm from where I coordinate our communication, media and technology practice for Northern Europe, as well as leading the 5G monetization service line globally. Before going into strategy consulting, I was also a leader at at t in America for many years. Our topic for today is one I'm very passionate about, network APIs. Our firm has actually done a lot of work in this area, and uh, we are helping our clients navigate this new and promising opportunity. Earlier this year, we also published a study on how developers view the opportunity of network APIs. Engaging with developers is a core success factor for building any API business. So this study filled an important void in the conversation on network APIs. If you have not come across it yet, I invite everyone to find the study at carney.com or reach out to me and I will be more than happy to send you a copy. In our session today, we're going to explore the new opportunities the concept of network APIs are bringing to our industry. And with me today, I have four very esteemed panelists representing a few players in our industry who are all very actively driving the concept of network APIs forward and contributing to forming the emerging ecosystem. We have David from Telefonica, Mark from the GSMA, Jose from Altis Portugal, and Cedric from Orange. Together, the five of us are going to unpack some aspects of these network API opportunities. So let's start by introducing the panel. And I remember sitting in the audience at the opening keynote at MWC last year, and Jose Maria, the chairman and CEO of Telefonica, he was talking about how to merge the best of the earth with the best of the cloud. And for me, who is very bullish on this network API concept, I was so excited to hear that the answer was open APIs. And this was the day when the GSMA Open Gateway Initiative was unveiled. And perhaps starting with you, Mark, now a year and a half later, when you introduce yourself, maybe share a little bit about the current state of the Alliance, if you would. Okay, no problems. So um, my name is Mark Cornell. I'm one of the technical directors at GSMA, um, and I'm particularly responsible for that technical direction of the Open Gateway project. Uh, we, we actually started two years ago. We broke cover 18 months ago, as Jasper said. Um, and I think we've had great traction in opening up the network, um, compared, certainly compared to anything we've done in the past. It, it has been really outstanding. Um, so now we've got 64 operator groups have signed the MOU. So it's an MOU that says, um, I will follow Open Gateway, I will adopt the Open Gateway standards and we'll roll out Open Gateway APIs. Um, so we've got 64 operator groups that have signed that and 22 channel partners, channel partners being people who bring developers to us and bring us ways to market. Um, what that gives us is 271 networks and that's 75% of mobile connections worldwide. So, so that, that's massive. That's 75% of the network coverage of all the subscriptions in the world are all signed up to say, yeah, we're going to do network APIs. Um, in terms of the APIs themselves, kamara has got 36 APIs published. Um, and in terms of launches, we've now got 125 launches. And that's over 47 networks. Um, if we look at it a bit deeper, 68 of those have also passed the uh, GSMA certification. We're running a certification program. And that makes sure that all the APIs are exactly what we say. We get global interoperability, global interoperability um, and that's, that's really where we want to get to. We want to get the same APIs all over. Um, lots of press. We've got about 17,000 media mentions uh, this year. Uh, there's about 8,000 last year, um, 17,000 this year, so double already. Uh, that's supply. And then demand, we're seeing lots of use cases coming in from the markets, lots of fraud stuff. So there's lots of fraud stuff as low hanging fruit and then moving into quality on demand, more know your customer things and, and all sorts of new things. Um, and then GSMA has just launched GSMA Fusion. And that's a dedicated team that's looking at bringing coordinated industry verticals in. So we look at the automotive industry as a whole. And so what are the pain points of the automotive industry? And the other one's the aviation industry, the other the key one for us. Um, and looking at aviation and saying, well, what are, the, what are the pain points and where can we help? And bringing that in as an industry demand rather than just an individual company demand. And that's where we are. It's massive traction, I think, in the market. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mark. So if we continue around the room to David, Jose and Cedric from Telefonica, Altis and Orange, who have all contributed to bringing this concept to life. So when you introduce yourselves, would you mind also sharing 
just one thing that your respective companies are working on. So let's start with David, please. Uh, thank you, Jasper, and good morning to everybody. So I'm David Delval. I am the director of Open Gateway at Telefonica. Um, I've been working on Open Gateway and APIs uh, for the last two years. As Mark was saying, we, we had a, a first meeting here in Madrid uh, in May of 2022 to see, okay, what do we do about this? And now as uh, yeah, we have, uh, I think, a great traction, great success, and a lot of work ahead of us. Um, Telefonica has been developing APIs um, for a long time now, and we have uh, close to 10 APIs already public in, in Spain and Brazil and in, in the other markets. Uh, we're starting with two, three APIs available uh, for commercialization. And what is more important, within the year 2024, we're going to double that, that number. So um, we see that Camara is producing a high variety of APIs, a very good portfolio that are mostly based on commercial reasons. And we believe that having you know, a wide offer to the market is very important for materializing the revenues. Fantastic. Thank you so much, David. Let's go to Jose next. Uh, Jose, please go ahead. Hello, good morning. My name is Zé Pedro Nascimento. I'm the CTO of Altice Portugal. And uh, well, we're looking very careful to, to network APIs business. And basically we're working, uh, our work is threefold. Uh, we look, we're building our platform with Altice Labs, our, our network APIs platform. And we're looking as well as uh, at uh, use cases and commercial model. And fundamentally, also to uh, develop this engagement. Fantastic, wonderful. Thank you, Jose. And uh, and uh, now let's go to Cedric. Uh, please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Cedric Gona. I'm head of uh, business strategy and channel management for Telco API within the Orange Group. So at Orange, we have created a dedicated API program uh, to support the Open Gateway initiative and to uh, have uh, all our forces in, within our different affiliates coordinated uh, to be able to, to match this new opportunity. And it's definitely for us a way to not to become a dumb pipe, but uh, to transform to a smart pipe. Fantastic. Very good. So this is our panel for today. And uh, we are going to have a conversation about network APIs. And as Annie um, um, also mentioned uh, in the opening, uh, if there are questions from the audience, uh, please submit them and we will try to uh, address those um, after we go through a few additional themes together. So uh, it's really great to hear that so much is already happening. And at the same time, many of us would like that this ecosystem would have uh, taken off even more by now. So making the most of this opportunity will require a lot of collaboration and partnerships. And historically, telcos have been really good at collaborating on technology. This has been through standards bodies and so forth. So Cedric, Orange was an uh, initial signatory of the GSM Open Gateway, just as you mentioned. And now more recently also a founding member together with Ericsson and 11 other operators, including Telefonica, I might add, uh, of the recently announced uh, new venture in this space. So Cedric, how do you think about collabor the collaboration dimension today? And uh, is the industry going to figure it out this time around for the network APIs? Yeah, thank you. So uh, definitely uh, one of the key success factors will be to have uh, the ability for operators to provide something consistent. So this is why Camara is really important. Following Open Gateway and Camara is really important because we have to provide APIs the same flavor, whatever the operators, because the developers doesn't care are you a customer of Telefonica, of Orange, Vodafone, or whatever? And it, this is why it is really important for us to be coordinated. And uh, the, pre, um, the foundation of this uh, joint venture with uh, Ericsson was really an opportunity to have a vehicle to accelerate the adoption. Accelerate the adoption because this vehicle is uh, supposed to be neutral and to motivate the different operators who are joining, either as funders or as commercial partner or partners, because it's open to everyone, to provide a full country support and an aggregation at the country, different countries level. Because if you are not able to expose something consistent at at least 90% 90, 90 of a country coverage, 
developers will not switch to uh, to API definitely. So this is a really key for us, and we don't want to do um, let's say maybe some mistakes we we could have done before with Vaulty, with Assets, with other technology where the alignment of the operator was too too long compared to the time to market and open the door to other players and to over the top players. Of course, there will be, um, let's say, food for everyone. But uh, if we want to be successful and to provide the industry something uh, variable, we have to be coordinated. So this is clearly the role of the GV. It's not, a, let's say, a commercial vehicle, but it's an acceleration vehicle for the industry. Now, if, if I may add, um, telcos are very good at coordinating technically, and, and we've done it in the standards for years, and Camara is actually working quite well this time around. Um, but the, the commercial coordination is always more difficult because of competition and antitrust and, and everything else. Um, I think uh, the GSMA plays a role there in, in the co you know coordination of, of telcos. But at some point, you need to go a step forward and you need a commercial entity like the NUCO that uh, help us uh, supply uh, APIs to many different channels. Yeah, today, without the NUCO, if you're a telco that wants to offer your APIs to a lot of channels, you have to connect with 12, 20 aggregators and hyperscalers. And each of them has a technical integration, which is easy because it is Camara but it has a commercial integration which involves contracts, privacy, et cetera, and that's more difficult. Um, with the NUCO in the middle, you only have to do one integration with the NUCO and the NUCO will take care of the hundreds uh, of, of the tens of integrations. And the other way around, if you're an aggregator, a small aggregator in a country, you are not capable of integrating with 200, 300 telcos, but you can integrate with one NUCO that will underneath have all the telcos. So we believe the NUCO will play a role in simplifying the supply of APIs and therefore making a lot more APIs uh, available in the market. And what, what, is, can... what is Sorry, interesting in, the, in this uh, ecosystem is that we are not competing each other. We are working together on the same path because uh, there will be no success alone. If we are not uh, all together successful on this, uh, there will be no success for anyone because we are not competing, we have all our market shares already. And if we are not able to provide something consistent to the industry, we will just miss the opportunity. So this is why it is important to, to work together in, in, in a good spirit to provide something interesting for the industry. Excellent. Thank you. And that is an interesting trade-off, David, that you brought up on how the industry has been really good on the technology, um, uh, let's say, coordination and collaboration. And uh, that venturing on the more commercial side has been a little more challenged. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe over to Mark, if you uh, have a perspective given the uh, Open Gateway uh, initiative on um, if it's primarily a technology uh, uh, driven um, um, topic uh, for you or if you see the GSMA potentially going uh, beyond that? So I, th I think there's a, num there's a number of points. So when when Open Gateway was, was first conceived, I think, we, we saw different ways of market to market. So we saw the use of aggregators, we saw the use of uh, federations, and, and the idea was to support any and all of those. And now we've seen NUCO come out as well. Um, so we've seen this um, this joint venture come out and, and anything that brings the market together and solves those technical challenges, the technical challenges are good, are, are large um, and, and they need solving. And, and that solves that and ev all the work that we've done solves those technical challenges and gets that interoperability together. And we've got to get that, as Cedric said, you've got to get to the 90% of it's the same. Um, to have that demand from industry and then but then it's the business side as well so the work coming in from from um seed from um fusion just my fusion um the work that's going on in the marketplace the work on trying to make sure um we have at least similar propositions going to market um and try to try to bring that together i think that's what nuco is going to do and the other aggregators are going to do a strong voice of the consumer um, to bring in and say, I want to consume APIs and I want to consume them like this and bring them bring them together. And all of that comes together and it solves the business and technical. And it's always difficult. I think, as David said, to try to get the business to come together is, is very challenging. 
Very true. So that's the uh, collaboration, let's say, across telcos. If we build on that concept of partnering, and in addition to the collaboration across the telcos, there's also the collaboration across the broader ecosystem. And we have almost touched on this already a little bit uh, in the conversation. Um, it's often here that we see these concepts really come to life. And uh, David, not so long ago, you were actually on a different stage at a different conference. This was in Copenhagen, where Telefonica was part of a launch and live demo together with the Glide API, Google Cloud, Orange, and the GSMA. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on a nice demo. But um, now, how are you thinking about you know, bringing the broader ecosystem uh, online as we develop these things? Yes, what, what makes this project uh, fascinating is that we are creating a worldwide ecosystem uh, from scratch. Well, not from scratch, because we have all the telcos already as an ecosystem and the GSMA there. But we, we need a lot more partners to make this a reality. And, and it is happening already. First of all, we need the network equipment vendors to help each of the telcos to expose the APIs. 5G is a great uh, advance in that sense, but you still need some layers and API gateways to do that. Uh, then, of course, you have the telcos. Then you need uh, the channels. You need the hyperscalers and the aggregators that know the developer very closely, that have a, a very close interaction with the developer, and, and they can actually play a fantastic role um, disseminating the capabilities that the telcos have. But uh, beyond that, you also have the system integrators that uh, can really add uh, the APIs to their toolbox. And when they are developing a big project for a big bank, for instance, they can add these APIs in the toolbox and, and provide better services. So they also need to be a part of the ecosystem. And finally, as Mark said, um, as with any new digital product, it's hugely important to co-create with the potential customers and um, making them part of the ecosystem. So, you know, the association of banks, the association of um, uh, autonomous mobility, association of, um, uh, you know, entertainment, any of these industries can widely benefit uh, from the capabilities that the telcos have had hidden till now. And we believe that making them part of the ecosystem and an active player will be very, very beneficial for the overall project. Excellent. Thank you so much, David. Um, does anyone else want to jump jump in on, uh, on this one? Uh, Cedric, you almost uh, touched on it a little bit in, uh, in, in the telco discussion. Anything you'd like to add? No, I think David said, <laughs> said already. Um, well, it, uh, we just see this as a, as a really nice adventure because uh, uh, if we succeed in having this, it would be a demonstration that when we work together, it's a, it's something valuable for us all. Fantastic. Thank you for that. So perhaps coming around a bit to the topic of developers again. So exposing APIs is really all about connecting with developer communities and making sure your services are interesting, helpful, attractive for developers to integrate into their creations. So Jose, like many operators at this stage, Altis Portugal has also joined into Open Gateway Initiative. And we have seen some creative use cases of network APIs, including on the wireline side, actually, within the broader Altis umbrella. When you look at the question of how to engage with developers, how are you thinking about driving this engagement? Well, I think uh, the steps that um, have been taken in terms of uh, creating a standardization for, uh, for, 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 for these APIs and these ecosystems will allow us to have this concept of connected apps, which means that there will be a collaboration also a competition between between the, the operators, so that uh, this is something uh, seamless for 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 the developers, because like Static was telling, uh, he doesn't care the developer doesn't care if the app is uh, for this operator for that one. He, he wants to solve a specific problem for the end user, and so the system sh sh should be seamless uh, for him. So. Um, on one hand, we need all this uh, standardization, and on the other hand, we need to promote the engagement of, of, of the, the, the developers, the development community, in, in, in straight co collaboration as well with the, with the upper scalers, 
because sometimes, or with these new codes, because sometimes the, 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 the network operation operators alone, they, they, they can't do this, they, they, they can't promote this adequately. But anyway, I can tell you something that we are going to do. Uh, we, we are promoting challenges, workshops, hackathons, and uh, specifically uh, now in November in the Web Summit that uh, will be in Lisbon, uh, we'll launch uh, an API sprint for, for, for developers, like a challenge for them to, to use uh, our platform and to try to develop connected apps. And that there will be a challenge with the price and stuff and uh, a judge and this. It's, 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 it's a question of promoting, uh, uh, letting the, the developers try and develop the, 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 the apps and to see the results and, and uh, try to stimulate this. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Jose. Um, David and Cedric, both Telefonic and Orange have been uh, in the API business for a long time. Um, anything either of you would like to uh, build on what Jose shared in terms of how to meet developers where they are and uh, how to strategically think about uh, building a business around it? Yeah, I, I think it's it's very important that all the telcos uh, have uh, you know a small developer portal with a sandbox and places where developers can really understand the, the technology and, and the documentation and play with it. That's uh, that's great. But we also have to be honest with ourselves and recognize that in the morning when developers wake up, they go to the hyperscalers to do their job. You know, they they. They are interacting with uh, platforms that are, you know, designed over the years to really cater to their needs. So our APIs have to be available there, and we have to cooperate with all these channels that have this developer connection uh, to help uh, evangelize, help educate. Uh, we we are in all kinds of events like this one, um, and together we will we will you know send the message to the developers there is this new technology available for you to use and, and it is uh, great uh, and you can you can improve your applications with it. So I think it's, it's more of a, an ecosystem uh, play that, that we need to do here to make sure that, that developers hear uh, and discover what we have to offer. Thank you, David. I saw Cedric, you came off mute yeah. also. Do you have... So far, uh, API access from uh, developers to operators was quite a jungle because uh, there was no standardization, so every operator has its own way of managing API for the same purpose, but different way to 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 call an API if you are uh, between uh, Orange, Telefonica, and, and others, for instance. So for a developer, it's a mess. Secondly, uh, even the same thing on the commercial level with the pricing, which could be complicated because totally different from one operator to the other one. Oper uh, developer doesn't know in advance uh, which operators do you belong? You are a subscriber or which operator? So it's even more complicated. And the last point is that you have a limited footprint and access. So you cannot develop a large scale business or development uh, if you are not proposing something consistent. It's uh, uh, certainly what we have learned from from the past and why the initiative is uh, was created is to to put some consistency on this. And secondly, uh, when you have these uh, uh, developers, when you are going to develop a conference, most of them, as said David, doesn't know about the potentiality of getting direct access to, to operators. There is more than 1,000 operators worldwide. So if you have to, to think about 1,000 different ways to connect, it's too complicated. So this is why most of the use cases were solved by workaround, like SMS, for instance. Most of the... Uh, authentication is done through SMS, which is not natural, it's just a workaround, but SMS is ubiquitous and you can have access everywhere. So this is why today uh, the SMS business was so much developed, it is because it's available everywhere with no question. So developers have built some processes on top of it to be sure that they can uh, have a, the larger footprint. So this is a key challenge, is to provide with API the same easy, Nest to use than SMS, but with a better user experience, better security, and so on.
Thank you, Cedric. Uh, Mark, I noticed that you came off mute the second that Cedric said uh, consistency. So uh... <laughs> Yes, consistency, very important. I will bang on about consistency all the time. Um, no, I was going to pick up something else. So Cedric said, well, so a couple of things. One is, when is that consistency? And it's bringing, how do you bring a thousand different operators down to one access point? Because um, developers want to use one access point. Um, so different routes to market through different portals, different ways of getting to the developer, that's really important. And then the other question I think is I'll challenge everyone is, is it the developer you need to reach or is it the product manager or the chief security officer who makes the decision, I'm going to use network APIs. So is it the developer who sit developing or is it the product office, product manager that says for my product, for my application, I need this additional functionality. Where do I go? Where do I find it? And is that the person you need to go to? Ah, and that eureka moment of, I need to use network APIs to do this. Or the security officer to say, how do I stop fraud? Network APIs, I can use that. So there's a challenge to everybody is, is how do we reach everybody? Because it's all yeah. of them. I think that's a, that's a great question. Yeah, and, the, and you get, just gave the answers, all of them. <laughs> but I think it is the same with all technologies. So uh, there are people that need to know how to implement the technology and it has to be easy for them because otherwise they will just say, okay, this doesn't work. And, and I mean, they are, they are critical in the value chain. And then, then you have uh, from the strategists to the managers, to the product managers that have a problem to solve. And if they learn about solutions, uh, they will tell the developer, why don't you look at this in more detail? So it's, it's both of them. And, and of course, um, telcos have a great, um, role to play when talking to the CIO of, uh, of companies, particularly if they are big companies, because we are talking to them all the time. And that's a great way of, of introducing network APIs. But it's still, the, the long tail developer, I believe, is, is hugely important. If, if you make it easy for him or her, you're making it easy for everybody. Yeah, Absolutely. I think to, today you have uh, both uh, the security officer and the product manager who have needs and requests towards developers and developers are doing uh, as much as they can, the best they can with what they have uh, available. And this is a role to provide them the right tools to, to fulfill the needs uh, of their um, of their requests from the security and, and product. Because the user experience today is not so good. When you have to, to, to enter uh, all the day uh, pin codes to, to justify your connectivity to some, uh, to some site or to some application, uh, the user experience is, is, is getting worse and worse. You cannot uh, continue this way. So you have to find a way more transparent, but as secure and as easy to use uh, than SMS and even better than SMS, uh, definitely, for the identity. And of course, there is plenty of new use cases we can propose, like uh, quality on demand, like uh, localization, like any other uh, services we can propose on top of API who will allow a product manager to, to define new new product and new way of communication. So, so let's carry these uh, words of, let's say, themes of consistency and uh, how it will be an ecosystem and so forth with us uh, throughout the conversation. So in the beginning um, of our conversation, um, I mentioned a developer study that we published earlier this year. And one of the conclusions that we laid out uh, is a hypothesis that we have a reasonably strong conviction around that we will live in a multi-channel world. And uh, this means that there will be the types of communities that we are discussing here today. So some could be telco-led, others could be aggregators, there could be hyperscalers and so forth. And all of these may be coexisting meeting developers in different places. So is this also how you're thinking about it? And how would you look to navigate these channels if we are going to live in a multi-channel world? So maybe maybe we start with uh, Cedric uh, this time. Um, please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, as uh, as we said earlier, so the, the, the GB purpose will be to to be able to aggregate the different operators and to propose to multiple other aggregators and hyperscalers and and potentially digital brand directly. But we will do also uh, directly as well. We are uh, we are, we are connecting. Uh, we are exposing our APIs to hyperscalers, so to the big ones who are providing full solutions, including API uh, needs. Bundled in their own solution, so we are providing those API to the API scalers. It's one main channel, 
because as said David, this is where the developers are today because uh, it gives them this uh, one single point of contact to, to access to, to multi, the variety of APIs and variety of uh, geographies. But we are also providing to aggregators because aggregators by design and CPaaS provider have some uh, corporate customers already connected uh, for SMS or RCS for uh, uh, OTT solution and they will be interested to also consume some uh, API connectivity solutions. So it's a second main channel. And after we also, of course, for some of um, operators, we have our B2B channel as well. We are using our B2B channel to develop and to provide some vertical solution to our B2B uh, corporate customers. You have a direct channel as well, providing on a portal direct to, to, to developers. So we don't believe that it will be a smaller part of the ecosystem, as, at least at the beginning, but it will be available for anyone who would like to develop directly uh, thanks to our solutions. And finally, uh, we also provide directly to some digital brands because you have some brands who are huge users of this kind of solution today. And of course, justify some direct connectivity between them, uh, between the two ecosystems, the digital brands, uh, GAFAM and so on, and the operators themselves. So we have plenty of channels. We will play with all of them. And the idea is to expose as much as possible to help to initiate uh, uh, the ecosystem and to ramp up uh, the adoption. Driving utilization on 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 the service. That's um, yeah. So it sounds like yeah, you're aligned, Cedric, with a multi-channel future. Uh, David, uh, I noticed you came off mute. Yeah, um, I th I think it's very clear that we learn from our past mistakes of creating um, proprietary APIs and sell them only through individual telco channels. So we are doing now exactly the opposite very standard, lots of APIs and multiple channels. And I think it's, it's hugely important that telcos treat these channels as, as customers. Uh, we need to you know, make sure that they are successful, listen to them, hear what they need and, and provide it to them because they are really the, um, the way developers can really learn about our APIs. Excellent. Who, who said that you all are also uh, want to join? Yes, uh, let me add, I think the, the what we need to do here trying to monetize this as much as possible is this is, is to find the right mix between channels okay because of course uh with the aggregator it's it's, it's simpler for, for for everybody but it's it's where the margin for the operator is is, is lower so and uh, through the hyperscalers is, is is much higher and directly as well so uh, we need to to find the right mix uh and a balance between you know the, the the power of the channel and and the the the, the, the margin for for the operator so it's, it's 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 very interesting but yes i agree we need to work with 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 all channels excellent so f thank you jose for bringing economics into the um, uh, into the discussion so as we optimize our engagement across these channels and across these communities really there is inevitably the question of pricing and the commercial models that you know would support these ecosystems and underpin um, the, the experience really. And uh, developers, they may be expecting to find a variety of commercial models for consuming network APIs. They, they may be looking for subscriptions, pay as you use, revenue shares, and maybe other constructs. So this also introduces the question of value of one activity versus another. So Jose, how, how are you thinking about this one? What, what do you expect that we will see in terms of these uh, monetization capabilities? Well, like I said, we, we need to work uh, through several channels, and but we, we, we need the right mix because for instance, if you go just through uh, aggregators, I think the the share for the for for the for the network operator will be very low, so we need to distribute. Um, for the for all the models available for the for the developers are good as long as we, we create value for for each other. Okay, you can be in subscription, uh, uh, revenue share, uh, whatever. Uh, let me tell you, it's, according according to this McKinsey uh, study, uh, this 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 market will be with value between one hundred and thirty and three hundred million uh, billion by two thousand and thirty. 
and we are addressing just a small a small slice of the market because right now all the applications basically they are uh, in finance and banking and so it is a way a long way to explore in other in other for instance in content media entertainment healthcare uh, utilities everything so we need to expand really this for for the other areas because there's a well this all these areas are still virgin to explore in terms of of connected apps so it's a long way and if you can have this uh share for instance let's let's say 300 billion okay uh our ambition is that perhaps we could with the, the network operators could get to one third of that of that uh, of that slice okay and the other will be split between the aggregators and uh, but that this is only aspirational okay let's see how how, 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 how how we can do it how we can mix these channels and uh, what will be the incentives also for for, for the developers yeah thank you Jose. and any um um additional and uh, mark i see you're eager to so, jump in on this one i'll probably say I think that it, number that jose mentioned also was uh, co-published by the gsma it so. was yeah that's a that's one of one of the ones that some research that that we asked we carried out um so this I means there's two parts one is the the api the income from the api itself and the other one is the the income from the services that get launched which need the api to work uh, and we see that 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 service wrap, that service part, is a lot bigger than the API itself, uh, in most cases. So, so that's an and that's a, a, a big area. The other thing I think that we need to, we as an industry, need to look at is we're okay in the large organisations, in the large operators, the operator groups. We know how to sell APIs. We're learning how to sell APIs. But if you look at the smaller operators, they don't it's a new area for them so they they sell subscriptions we sell handsets we sell fixed line services we sell lots of things but we don't sell apis so it's an area where they need new capability and they need, need new models so that's an area that, that still needs a lot of work and trying to get that education around the industry to bring everyone to, together i think that's something that's very important thank you very much mark so oh david yeah want... I, a couple of uh, additional comments about monetization um, first, uh, it is important that we also standardize how we charge for API. So for instance, the QOD API, you can charge by the minute or you can charge by the API call. And, but if, if you charge differently in Telefonica and in Orange, then the developer and the aggregator gets totally confused. So that's part of the role that the GSMA is, is playing as well. And, and secondly, on a totally unrelated comment, when we think about API monetization, it's interesting that we, with Open Gateway, we're enabling also data monetization. For years, telcos have been trying to monetize the data that we have from our customers. And um, besides our an, an inability to appify that data, which now is solved, we also had uh, serious issues with privacy and protecting our customers. Uh, the beauty of Camara and Open Gateway is that, and the main innovation I would say, is that we have means for ensuring that we protect the privacy of our customers. And that uh, enables us to monetize their data with their permission. Uh, and all this, the, all this technology that has been developed to enable permission it, um, uh, really enables the business. And that's uh, why it's so important that all telcos that are implementing Open Gateway also implement all the um, adjacent privacy preserving technologies that are required for monetizing data. Thank you, David. Thank you. So um, as we are nearing the end of our conversation together today, uh, clearly you've all spent a great deal of time working on this topic. And when you reflect back on what you've run into so far, what are some of the learnings that you would like to share with our audience today? This could be might be something to unblock the impasse that we sometimes feel like we are seeing in the marketplace, and really unleashing the true promise of uh, network APIs to the world. So uh, should we go around the table maybe and, um, and maybe start with Mark this time? Uh, Mark, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, so it's my usual one: um, global interoperability. Uh, <laughs> so certification and global interoperability. I said so. We've done sixty something APIs. Um, Every single one, though, when they've come in, has been different. In some small way, they've been different. 
So that means I've got 60 different APIs in the, in the market. But in actual fact, we've been through certification, so we don't. We have 60 of the same APIs in the market. So global interoperability, we don't want local silos, we want global interoperability. And that's developer APIs and the operator APIs towards the aggregator as well. We haven't talked about those. Um, but our out to the marketplace needs to be easy as well as it is between two developers. That's me. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Uh, David, let's go to you. Um... Yes, uh, as far as lesson learned, the main one is that um, perhaps we already knew it, but coordination uh, takes time, takes takes a lot of time. And one of the main reasons is the telco budgeting cycle. So we budget yearly and we have our strategic plans. And when we decide, okay, let's launch an API, uh, it's hard for us to do it in the middle of, of January, for instance, uh, you know, because we don't have the budget. We have to wait till the next budget cycle. And that, when you compound that across all the telcos in the world, it, it, it results in a slow uh, development of common APIs. Um, so if we were to do this again, I think we would uh, really match the API release cycles with the budgeting cycles so that we would have today a lot more APIs uh, around the world. Having said that, I think that's just is happening naturally. So I'm sure next year, uh, hundreds of telcos will have budget for um, uh, making available APIs, and the next year it will be more and more. So so that's just happening, but it, it takes time. Interesting. That's that's a good one. Uh, matching the API roadmap with budgeting cycles was not one I expected, but thank you, David. Uh, Jose, uh, should we go to you next? Uh, well, I agree. I fully agree uh, with Mark. So and uh, also with David, but uh, we need to have this standardization and cooperation. Without that, this will, will not be unleashed. We need engagement, uh, development engagement, so to simplify the, the, the access to, to, to the network of APIs. And, uh, and this concept of connected apps, apps that are really uh, solving actual problems on the end user side. It's the only way that with all these three factors combined, I think uh, we will uh, we'll go, we'll have success. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Jose. And, and Cedric, what, what are your lessons learned? Yeah, um, it's true that it, it takes time because uh, the, the main threat of operators is a fragmentation. So, because we have so many, the time we spend to, to align is too long. All the time we have all these uh, histories. So, for instance, uh, the issue that when we take time to align and to propose something consistent again, uh, there are some alternatives who are showing up. So, uh, roaming took a so long time to be efficient. Wi Fi was proposing an alternative. Uh, voice and SMS uh, over the top were proposing alternative because they have no fragmentation and it's easier for them to reach larger uh, population. So it takes time. Hopefully, we are relying on the technical side thanks to Camara or, already. So we have all the technical foundation to have something clean to propose. Now we have to be clean and fair on the commercial side as well. Because if operators are too greedy on this or are uh, looking each other too long time before having something uh, clean to propose to the industry, alternative will show up as well again and we will lose a big part of the of the opportunity so uh, it takes time but we don't have so much time if we want to be successful and we encourage all the operators who are not yet joined the mou who are not yet joined the api programs to to start to work uh, together because it will be a, a global success or not wonderful um thank you so much cedric um Maybe a question to Annie, if I may. Um, are there any questions that have come in? Um, no, there aren't, surprisingly. Um, I'd like to, um, actually, I really love David's comment about something simple that you didn't think of before about just a line in the budget. And I just think that's fantastic, isn't it? It's that after the event, it's obvious, but beforehand, it's just not on the radar. So I like those sort of things that trip human beings up. Um, I'm just wondering about, um, I have this idea with developers that there's going to be some kind of tipping point. Um, and I just wonder if any of the panel agrees, because um, it's what always happens. We talk about things for ages and then suddenly 
you know, it happens. I'm just wondering if any of you have any ideas what that tipping point might be. Apparently not. <laughs> Maybe if you knew that, you'd be doing it now, I guess. So. No, no, I think I think we're seeing that already in the banking industry with anti-fraud. I mean, they, all the banks are looking for solutions. They, they find solutions in, in several technologies, but uh, with our... Uh, you know, open gateway APIs that offer silent uh, identification, et cetera. Um, at least what we see in our relationship with the banking industry is that they all know about it. They are all want to use it and they are all evaluating, you know, what's the price, what's the cost of implementing, et cetera. And, and it will happen for different APIs at different points in time. So for quality on demand, uh, right now we see a lot of trials and, you know, beautiful uh, demos, et cetera. But um, they are the customers are waiting a little bit till we have network slicing more ready in more countries, and, and then that's when the tipping point will happen for quality on demand. And then you have others like population density that will be useful for drones, but drones are not yet there flying all over our our cities. But once they do, they, there will be a tipping point as well for that API. So I think it we're seeing it. The important thing is that we have a, a big portfolio that we all develop. Uh, many APIs, and we'll see how each of them uh, get gains uh, momentum. Okay, so maybe my mistake is, and perhaps just lazy thinking, is to think about developers as one kind of mass, mm -hmm. rather than um, a very diverse group that are focused on incredibly different functions and in very different markets from banking or manufacturing or whatever. So it's kind of an increment, it will be the, the, the mass will be right across the board, not from any one single place or background. And that, that's where I think also we have seen a lot of telcos sometimes go chasing for the silver bullet use case that will prove in this model. And uh, instead of maybe many different use cases for many different developers and it's more about f finding that first developer that will show the world uh what uh, what the po possibilities with these concepts really are um, yeah i think that once something super successful it'll be you know that'll start the stampede yeah exactly okay. Well, gentlemen, I thought that was a really great panel about a critical area. So thank you very much to all of you for your contributions. They're very welcome. And I'd just like to call out Jose, who is the winner of our CTO of the Year Award for being a game changer. And uh, you can read about that on our website. Jose, congratulations to you again. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you, Jesper. Thank you, thank you for your moderating duties.